Normally you wouldn't see me using this plate because it takes you across an area just to get light seeds, but the scenery it takes you across is really pretty, so I wanted to do it anyway. Just as a quick extra before we get to the main event. Look how nice that stream is, it's insanely pretty. But this is really the only thing I'm going to do that for. I might also be doing this because it's really funny to watch the prince ram his head into something. And I really wanted to show that off. That might be the main reason I did this. Alright, so where were we? Heaven's Stair. This leads to the observatory. For generations, the Ura mapped the stars from here. The stars that guided them across the desert, brought hope in the night. As hope faded, so the astronomers left. The observatory became just another empty tower. Now, the alchemist will be turning it to his destructive purposes once more. So we know that the Aura looked to the stars for more than scientific reasons. The evidence I have toward this is that Elika just said so herself, and they named the observatory Heaven's Stare, which is the most anime-sounding name for anything. I mean, honestly, you wouldn't name it that if you didn't have some kind of sentimental attachment to it. Otherwise, you would just call it the Stare to the Observatory. But in all seriousness, it makes sense that the Aura would look to the stars for guidance in more than one way. They seem to be a very hopeful and spiritual people. As much as they are scientific, actually. Again, the place seemed like kind of a utopia before it... Well, it... 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 this happened. After the concubine throws those wasps at us, we're gonna start seeing them in the overworld. They're not a big deal, though. When you don't have movies and video games, I imagine that plays and looking at the stars are a great way to escape. been inside this place for 10, maybe 20 generations. Now the plates are lit once more. Ready to climb to the stars? How many times have you used that line? Let's go. An observatory. You recognize it? This place isn't the beginning and end of civilization. Well, actually, it might be the end of it. Your people cut yourselves off and then stared at the stars. Stars tell us the time, the seasons. Guide us over the deserts and seas. Now that's a lot of use when you don't go anywhere. You know it's been proved by scientists that all people who stare at the stars are crazy. Anyone who hopes for something better is crazy? You said it, Princess, not me. How about we just stand here for a while? It makes sense that the Aura would put so much value in the stars when Elika said they use the stars to guide themselves across the desert. This is one of the hardest places you'll have to use this wall run power. The hit detection is very precise. Here's one of the few situations we have to fight in the middle of a level. Watch out. This enemy is shaped differently, but it doesn't really act all that different. We can't really push it against the wall behind us, though, because there's Corrupted back there. Sorry, Corruption. Obviously, it doesn't take as much damage as a Corrupted would. I like the design of Heaven's Stair. It's easy to miss because it's wooden and decayed, but things like this pattern in the floor here I find really interesting. This whole room has a light shade of blue to it. People don't talk about lighting in video games much, but the lighting you choose can make areas a lot more memorable than they would be otherwise. I'm not sure what knocked the prince back there. Maybe that's some kind of fail-safe if he gets stuck in a combat animation. So before we started climbing up here, we heard the prince kind of talking down to Elika's idealism. But she probably needs that idealism to deal with her duty. 
to make it, well, tolerable. Faith and hope can be dangerous things, but they can also be kind of like painkillers when things are down. There's not another way up. Outside the tower? I can't see any other way. We'll have to reach those mechanisms. In the land of the Ura. The city of the Ura. The people were once across many lands and many cities. This was their capital. This is one of my favorite rooms in the game just because of the layout. So we haven't really thought about it yet, but what Elika said just there makes it seem like the Ura are kind of almost extinct. Now, we don't know if the Aura was really a race, so much as a people dedicated to serving Ormaz. That's corrupted air. If you breathe it... It'll be the last breathing you do. Well, if the only way is up, then let's go up. We have to go down to reach the other power plates. After we've gone over there to activate this first mechanism. Oh, let's just make it fast. I don't want to end up with a lung full of corruption. Well, breathing corruption does sound kind of... kind of nasty. The corrupted air might not be moving. It's not thinning out either. The corrupted air is unlike the wasps in that it only affects a certain area. And the area it affects is pretty wide. It doesn't exactly follow you. But we do have to stay still, just like the wasps, for a very long time for it to kill us. But as we were talking about, if being an aura is defined by your faith in Ormaz, then Elika might be one of the last aura, if not the last aura. She does have faith that people will come back when they hear about what happened here. But I'm still not so sure. Moved. We still can't reach it. We'll have to get to those other switches. The sense of urgency created by the corrupted air is not really necessary for this room. It was kind of neat enough on its own. But it's a fun gimmick. It makes a lot of sense that the alchemist of all people could create corrupted air. Elika has said that he has a better understanding of the corruption than the others. But, we still don't know exactly what he was motivated by. I mean, yeah, he's still talking about science, but... Either he's incredibly deranged, or he had some kind of secondary motive. Science for the sake of science generally doesn't drive people to kill others. There's also the fact that he took a more active role in trying to bring back Armin than the other Corrupted. He seems to have more dedication to the main goal. The others just seemed interested in killing us. But he's never spoken about Armin, so I don't want to assume that he's faithful to Armin. Just that for some reason he has a greater sense of urgency than the others. The whole game we've seen the Corrupted waiting for us, but trying to destroy the Fertile Grounds, that's actually a pretty good move. Maybe the alchemist was actually the only one who could pull it off. Then let's get to the top before the alchemist chokes us off again. You can turn these cranks more than once if you hold a direction instead of just tap it. This is a pretty long stage, all things considered. But yes, perhaps he was trying to destroy the fertile ground because he was the only one with an idea on how to do that. But even then, I'm not buying this whole science for the sake of science thing he's trying to sell. This is the hardest place you have to use the wall run power in the game. It's actually pretty tough. Elika could just scoot, just scoot a little bit so I can get through. I underestimated you. Yeah, that happens a lot. 
make things easier, conform to my low expectations, and give up. That's one of my favorite lines in the game. It's, it's just really witty banter, and it gives more to his character. Also, guess what? Guess what? Learn your lesson, asshole. That'll be another time you underestimated me. Every step we take, there's always one more. And so the present becomes the past. Our actions now build the foundations for what comes next. Depressing, isn't it? The second black gate is opened. Well, I didn't think we'd last this long. Might as well walk into some more danger. How do we get out of here? Through that portcullis. That switch should raise it. Well, let's pull that switch and get out of here. 